Hi everyone. Going to be um playing a game against Josh Parkin now. It's gonna be um a twenty minute game. So it should be interesting. Anyway, let's go. Just put some salmon down. And I am white and I will open with E four. Let's see what he responds with. And he has disconnected already. And returned. I think the 20 minute game is because uh, Lois usually sweats one minute. He's got a very dodgy connection. So he's gone for the Karakan defense, so I will play d4. Get some fans going. Uh, so he's gone d5, now I'll play knight c3. Just go down the main lines. I'm thinking that maybe I should try the Panov out, which is more aggressive than I've read in a book, but I'm sure it's mandatory that you take on e4, and now in the palm, attack twice and defending once, so if I take, takes, knight takes, then he's got some maybe discoveries on my queen, but they don't really do anything, so I'm just going to take, be a pawn up, and what's he going to do is takes, knight takes, there's no discoveries, so I'm just going to be a pawn up here, huh? and now he's tried to hit me with e5, if I take, he'll take with the knight. He isn't really threatening anything. Maybe I should play something like bishop c4 and go for the kill. Or maybe knight f3. Knight f3 looks pretty tasty. Disconnection alert. Uh, reconnection alert. Right, what's going to be played now? What's going to be played now? If he takes my pawn, I will actually probably take with the queen. But then he'll align bishop c5 with tempo, which isn't too great. So maybe I should, maybe I should take with knight. And he's stuck. So knight takes pawn. If pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn. Uh, let's go for it. Now what's going to be played? c5 hitting the knight. But isn't that just weakening b5 badly? I mean, every pawn move creates a weakness. Um, so let's hop into um, the weak square, but then again if he kicks move a6, I have to go back to um, a3, which isn't so pleasant, but then I can always come to c4. But I don't like the look at that, knight f5 allows his knight to come out with discoveries. Maybe I should go back to b3. I'll do that, yeah. I'm a knight and queen and I'm on my d5 pawn, which is good. And now I'm just going to consolidate the pawn and then murder his king. Got a couple of fans here. So now let's see. He's just getting his pieces out. Maybe I should play bishop g5 and pin it, but maybe I should just get my own kingside pieces out first. I'm not too keen on bishop d3 is a good square, but I'm not too keen on blocking the uh, defense of the pawn. I can always maybe um, bishop c4 looks a bit dodgy in front of the pawn, but I will be trying to advance that pawn to d6 later. Um, decisions, decisions. Hmm. Well, I usually play this slow, but it's 20 minutes each, and I just want to give you um, guys some ideas or something on how to play these positions. Um, maybe Bishop F4 is good. It's a good active diagonal, that. Can't be challenged. Stops his Bishop coming to D6. Hey, I'm, I'm going to go for that. Now what could he play? If he if he checks him on the E line, I'll always play bishop e2 and then he blocks his bishop in. But I really want to put the bishop on d3, so I may have to maybe retreat the knight back to it. Oh, he's played a6, so he wants some expansion on the queen side with b5, and he's also stopping the knight coming there. <laughs> maybe this is epic kill some watch. Right, so, um, by the way, um, George got the same club as me, which makes this match interesting. Now watch that play. Should I play bishop d3 perhaps? Or maybe bishop c4 will be hit by a b5. Uh, every problem you've created a weakness. So b6 is weaker but it's hard to exploit for now. Should I, I don't want to castle long in case he pawns doms me. I don't want to be too reckless here. Playing a low rated um, a pawn up. Um, bishop d3 b5 frame 
fight with C4 is a bit awkward. Maybe I should just put the bishop on E2 and then castle and then take it from there. He also might be playing mm, maybe knight B6 and then he's got pieces on it. Maybe bishop E2 and if then they can always protect the pawn from F3 as well. I'll do that. Right, what's going to be played now? I spent like four minutes on nine moves. So he's, so he's gone b5 for his advance. He's trying to get some initiative in return for the pawn. If c4, he ever plays c4, though, I'm just going to He's going to hop into d4 and then to c6. So he can't really do that. b4 allows, well, quite a lot of things. But there isn't actually a brilliant square for knight if he play, ever plays b4. That's the problem with knight a4, queen a5 check. No, no more knights on it for you. Can I sacrifice on b5? Bishop takes pawn, takes knight, takes. It's interesting. But not too clear. I don't want to complicate things too much. Sir Castle only plays b4. I'm not, I don't know where to about this move. It's just that my knight hasn't really got a brilliant square. Maybe I should play bishop f3 and then clear it. And put my bishop. And then I'm throwing stuff like d6. In fact, yeah, I'm going to go for that. It's a good move, that. Nice little nifty manoeuvre this, and I've got two raking bishops, and he's n I've got my pieces out as well, and if I get my forces together, this could be a quick knockout. So he's gone bishop b7, putting some more pressure on the pawn, and um, developing a piece. But it's a defending ad adequately at the moment, so maybe I should just be um, castling here, and then take it from there. He's also stopped my threat of d6. Then again, d6, say he takes, queen takes f3, tells me develop. d6 also cramps him and removes the pawn from all them pieces. And also cuts off the bishop's protection of c5. I'm just going to castle first. Now we're getting a bit of a crowd going here. And they're all on YouTube. <laughs> and I should tell them it's all on YouTube. Oh, he's done it. I thought this was bad, this. But then again, yeah, even if I move knight to d4, the pawn's still protected more as many times as it's attacked. So I'm just going to hop into d4. And then to c6 if he's not careful. And if he takes then I've got this really brutal pawn. And then I can always, like, just hack his king up in centre. If he's not careful, rook e1 check and d6 is coming. Now he's going queen b6. Uh, now what should I play? So many good moves here. Knight c6 is real tempting. Rookie one check. In fact, rookie one check. If bishop e7, uh, I have d6. So let's go for that. This looks crushing this. Quite fun commentating on longer games. I might do some more actually. Hmm. What's what's happening now? So let's say he has to be with king, so king d8. Is there any like clear win? Well, I shouldn't be looking for clear wins, just for good moves. I can play knight e6 with check, which is pretty tempting. Um, yeah, let's see, king d8, knight c6 check. Um, bishop takes, pawn takes is real. Sh In fact, bishop takes, pawn takes is going to um, win the knight. But however, if he moves it, king, it has to go to c8. But then again, what's the follow up? But then again, my knight is strong there, so I don't think we necessarily need a follow up. So let's go for it. He's going to probably start begging me not to put it on YouTube now. <laughs> okay. He's still miles ahead on the clock. That's no excuse. So like bishop takes, pawn takes, he's winning a piece. If king c8, then let's think of a good move. He's a uh, knight nice stopping my um, rookie, uh, rookie 8. Should be mate. Alright. Maybe I could play some like queen e2 for any queen e8, knight takes, and rook takes, which would be mating. That is pretty tasty. But it can always be stopped, I suppose, by, say, bishop b4, and he's got pieces on it. Um, 
problem is I can't move the d6 pawn, that's the thing. Pawn to d6, which I'd like to, because of the knights up beyond pre. Everything seems defended well. And what's the best way to continue? Let's have a look at let's have a knight e7 check. If bishop takes, rook takes is strong. Mm, but he didn't have to take. What else is there? I need to bring maybe my queen and rook into the game. Queen e2, bishop b4 perhaps, or no, bishop c5 maybe. In fact, I'm going to go for queen e2 actually. But I have no idea what I'm tactics here, because then my pawn's not defending as much, but... If I have queen e2, knight takes, bishop takes... No, I can't do that. Queen e2, knight takes d5. Bishop takes d5, bishop takes c6. No, I can't do that. In fact, well, oh, it's hard to find a good move, that's the problem. Should I just go for this knight e7 check? Because I don't think the knight's that good on c6, actually. Oh, wait a minute, bishop e3. Kicking the queen away, that's pretty nice. Um, I don't like the queen on b6. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna kick it away. Right, so where's it going? Say, might go to c7 or a5. No, wait a minute, it can only go to c7. And then, but then, what have I got? It's the only move, but I haven't really got a follow up. That's the problem. I have a pawn up at the end of the day, and if we swapped all pieces off, I'd still win. But I should decide. That's it. Oh, yeah, that's got a move. Bishop c5. Developing the piece and blocking it. However, is knight e7 check worth considering? I mean, he doesn't have to take it, of course. If he did, he'd lose his queen on b6 because it's a pin, but he can just ignore it. And I'd have to take. Maybe I should just take. Get some of the pieces that could be protecting his king. Um, that's annoying me. Right. Bishop takes, knight, queen takes, something. Mm. I'm going to get rid of that bishop. So what's he going to take back with? Mm, what could he actually take? What's he it's about with the queen. Now, should I penetrate with rook e7? Right, what's the best way to proceed? Maybe maybe a penetration with um, rook e7 is best. Knight e7 doesn't do too much, from what I can see. In fact, queen e2 looks pretty tasty. I'm just worried about tactics against my own d5 pawn, because it's only protect the knight's only protected by that and the bishop. There's is knight e4. No, I think knight e4 is good actually, but it, again, it, bro it blocks the end protection of um. The knight. In knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes, or maybe rook takes. In fact, knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, knight f6. Hmm. Right. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm thinking of just knight e7 checking d6. But I'm not too keen on my d5 pawn being exposed. Maybe I should just double on the E line with rook e7. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. You stop having missed a tactic here or something. Wait a minute. Yeah, I have. I've just missed a tactic. Yeah, because now my uh, rook's not protected. I don't know if I missed that. I was thinking for ages then. Oh, wait a minute. Have I? In fact. If I'm just gonna take here, might it might actually be some quite good move. Might actually still be good this. If I take here, I'm just gonna take my rook. In fact, I, I may have not calculated any of this, but when I take his knight with check, his rook's gonna be on pre as well. In fact, this might not actually be a blunder. I mean, of course, you can tell that I thought it was a blunder, but this might actually be perfectly fine. 
Oh, and now he's trying to mix things up with knight e5. Oh, he's stopping on my mate threats as well. He wants to play knight takes f3 and queen takes rook. That's what you think. Rook takes e5, queen takes e5. His knight stops queen d7 to b7, mate. That knight f6 seems to be doing a lot of things. I think I've got to sacrifice the exchange. I have, I have a lot of compensation. What else have I got? Um, can't, I can't lose to George Parkin. What's force taking here? What's that? What's force? This is rook d7 any god. In fact, rook d7, if a knight ever takes, and I can take back with check and expose, but then he's got, oh, he's got knight takes a free check. That is depressing. Oh, wait a minute. In terms of serious calculation, rook d7, knight takes f3 check, pawn takes f3, knight takes d7, and if it takes queen takes d7, then queen b7 is mate. Can I honestly get away with this? Rook d7, knight takes f3, g takes. Yeah, knight takes f3, g takes f3. If knight takes, then takes queen takes, queen b7 is mate. Honestly, well, then, what if he just takes it? If he just takes it, then could he fall for it? It's worth a try. We only live once. Oh, well, I mean, it might just take the c6 pawn then. This is probably the most unsound thing I've ever done, and I've done loads of unsound things in my um, chess career. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, just in case he falls for it, I'm going for it. He'll be like, what is this? Now he'll probably think it from his side. Nope, this has been brilliant in there. Squad, knight takes f3 check. Go on, be brave. I might even just pre-move it to take the mech. <laughs> Go on, this could be a brilliant to this. Go on, take it. Oh, he has done. Oh, no, it's a Queen G5 check. I didn't really consider that, but does it do anything? Oh, no, I just ignored it and took my own pawn. That is rather depressing. I was hoping to take my rook. And now my rook's on pre twice. However, I've got rook d6 attacking the queen. I can't take my pawn because um, cause of, um, qu cause the queen's on it. And now, this should still be better for me. But I'm a bit short. I could get a short time here. I hope I've not, I hope I've not missed the tactic this time. But yeah, I could do a speeding up. But if I can get my um, heavy piece into the attack, we say queen d4 and rook e1, then this should be over. But I've opened my king up a bit for that cheap trick. But it wouldn't have lost if I took with queen. So now he wants to uh, maybe play knight e8 and dislodge my rook or something. I need to act fast here before I get some serious counterplay. Should queen d4? They're off. They haven't even steered. They didn't even see that Queen D7 to B7 was mate. <laughs> Pat says. Queen D4, Knight E8. And it's got to be something better. What about Knight E4? Knight takes, Pawn takes. Gives me a strong center. I'm and the Rook's still still going to be protected. And if he loses that Knight, he could be in trouble. But he's double up on the D line. I'm not a pawn up anymore, which is a bit annoying. It's got to be better for me, this position. Yeah, if you don't take my knight, in fact, I'm going to go off this, actually. Because uh, if you don't do anything, I'll take his knight off. Let's just pre-move it. Yeah, he's took it, as I expected. Disconnection alert.
My cafe is a bit dead for the first time tonight. This cafe doesn't have many people, but it is like very lively. In fact, as long as we've gone without chat that tonight, compared to the other cafes. So I'd recommend joining. We can make it even more lively and have some great times together. Right, so... Oh no, this, is, this isn't too great. Rook takes, queen takes. Queen takes, rook checks. It's going to be a draw that if we swap everything off. That isn't good. It's rated this as well. Does queen g4 do anything? I don't think it does. Um, in fact, do I have to do the queen swap actually? So rook takes d8, queen takes d8, check, and g4, and pick the g7 pawn off. I can just pick the G7 pawn off anyway. In fact, I'm going to throw in this um, check. Yeah, this in a bit past the C's check. But I'm going to commit to think to swapping the rooks off now. But his rooks out of play. And if I can bring mine in first, then I should win. But I've only got four minutes. I think I've been joining on too much. But it's blocked with a rook. So now, can I get away with rook takes D7, queen takes, queen takes G7. He hasn't got any check. But his queen could start stirring up some trouble if I give him that tempo. But if I want to win the pawn, I have to take it. Let's go for it. Takes. God, it used to be him up for fun, and this is going to be a grind, this, if I win. It looks like he's improved a lot. So queen takes d7, just queen takes g7, and try and win the queen and rook and game a pawn up. Oh, they always have to criticise me, don't they? <laughs> they don't know what it's like to be under pressure. George attention seeking as usual. Show you all you people um you used to got King's Crush Cafe a lot, no he's attention seeking. Yeah, I'm worried um it's, it's, if it could do some problems. In fact wait a minute, rook D one or Queen takes G four check kind of stops that. I think I'm just committed to taking the pawn. If I do, then, but then I have to be careful if the queens come off. Rook game is drawn a lot. Right, let's go for it. Yes, I know I missed Rook AD1, didn't even consider it. Right. What's the best thing to take it, plan to take it from here? He's going to probably infiltrate with his queen with queen e2 or something, which is very awkward. Attacking some pawns and stirring up some trouble. The queen swaps aren't necessarily good because um, Rook game is drawish tendency. See, um, so he's offering a queen swap, but then again, queen takes, king takes, pawn takes. I win another pawn, but after rook f8, I can't hang on to the uh, pawn, so it's only going to be one pawn up. Then I don't think that's enough to win. They'll be amused. They'll be amazed when I decline it. But in fact, no. In fact, I check and then I take with the queen, perhaps. No, I take. In fact, let's play this check. I'm going to move his king somewhere. I was going to say the same thing if I take the queen. And my queen's under attack, so that was a bit stupid. King b7. So queen takes f5, queen takes pawn, takes can onto that pawn. But then I can always bring my rook in with check to d1. And when he takes that, I'll take his pawn. And when he's h7 pawn. But then again, he's got rook g8 in this position. Is that dangerous? I think I can just move my king away and be safe. Right, let's go for it. I think king h1, maybe. I maybe king f1 getting close to centre in case queens come off. Which they have done. And as expected, this rook e1. So when he takes my pawn, I'm going to go check and win the h7 pawn. The idea was to drive his king up to um, b7 so he's vulnerable to this check. <coughs> and two pawns should be enough to win. But now he's just ignored that. And now I have an awkward task. Um, rook on the 7th alert. But then again, oh, h5 is very, oh no, he's got h5, hasn't he? Oh, he's missed it. Bring king close to the centre. Need to speed up here as well. Don't want to throw away a potentially winning position due to clock. This is good now, now he's no pressure. Now I can just bring my king in. Should be winning this now. Just can I win it in the time allotted? That's the thing. So h5. Um, rook h7. He has to play rook g5. And then I can play something like f6. Let's go for that. So I'm going to play rook g5 now, I'll just play f6. 
he's done it. Let's see, f6, rook f5, f7, and wins, I think. Is there anything better? Let's go for it. It was supposed to worse. He win the f pawn, I win his h pawn, and then I win with that outside pass pawn. See, what's he going to do now? Rook f5, perhaps? Hmm. Should I play rook h6? And then for any Benetian moves, king, so we've got f7. Now he's going to bring his king. If he, brings, if, I, if he goes king d7 or something, I go queens with check and win. So let's see how to win this now. Well, I can play rook takes h5 here because if he takes the rook, then I queen. But then he, he just takes my pawn. Just ignores it. Um, just bring my king in. Got to be a way to. I don't know. I really know the way to win this. To be honest, sounds weird, but I'm not that good at end games. Nice throwing in a check. Just bring the king closer to the pawn. Bit past his check. This it seems. Mm, should I offer the f pawn? I'm gonna offer the f pawn to bring my king in. Can I have the f pawn. In fact, I can always. I I'll just take his h pawn. No, no, I'll take my f pawn. In fact, is this a bit risky? In fact. I bring the king in, sacrifice another pawn just to bring the king in. And I've got plans of rook h6 followed by rook f6 blocking the line off and then I'll win. Should be game over this. I oh, just thrown in another check to king f6 and I'm going to play king g7 and then king g8. Or should I play king e7? That will go here. Right now, king f8, I've blocked my own pawn, that's the problem. I've got what should, I, what should I put the king? Let's put it on h8. And then maybe rook g7. And then rook g8 and f8 queen. Now rook g7, king j and f8 queen is the win. Now I've only got 1 minute 42, but I'm quite fast, so I should be fine. <laughs> he's got a bit of tensions I've got over a bit. In fact, he's just like the queen. And now that's game over. I think I expect him to resign. Always oh, playing on. In fact, I would just simply pick off his rook. And the game. Game, set, and match. It's been a very good game, this though. Just going to finish him off now. Um, I see if he's worked out. Was he just putting Fritz or something? Uh. No stalemates because he's got palm moves. He's played this too fast as well. Right, what, what's, it, what's the king going? Well, next move I will maybe bring the queen back to um, d6, then to f6, and then I'll be mating a few moves. If you don't move a pawn, he has to move his king to g4, which makes it easier. Um, where's he going to go? I don't really need to comment this, but might as well try and find the fastest way to mate. Um, should resign really, to be honest. Let's see, what's the fastest mate? In fact, I will play rook f7 and then maybe queen g2 check next move. Oh, that is the funniest thing I've seen all game. Should I accept? Very tough decision, it quite majorish this. <laughs> right. And I shall throw in this pre-move of checkmate. But that was a good game. I enjoyed that game actually. I hope you've all found it instructive as well as we all did. Um, please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.